This is my very easy and simple recipe for a rabbit and black pudding pie. Here is a quick look at the ingredients I use for the filling. You can adjust the quantity of ingredients accordingly for the amount of pies you want to cook. In this photo clip I'm going to be adding ingredients that will make three half size roasting dishes and pies. I am using seven large rabbits that have been pre-cooked in oven roasting bags to make the meat tender and moist. I have removed all the meat from the bone and diced it into medium to large chunks. I have cut three leeks into medium segments and diced two sticks of celery into small pieces. I have then peeled and sliced six medium to large carrots, chopped six large onions and added one pound of chopped cooking bacon. I will be using about half of the black pudding stick you see here, but you may want to add more or less black pudding to suit your taste. I have also peeled and chopped six large potatoes into medium chunks. This is a closer look of how I have prepared the rabbit meat after removing it from the bone. I am going to use about half of this large black pudding stick, but depending on your taste you might want to use more or less. I add all the ingredients to two large roasting tins and mix it all up. For my stock I will be adding two beef stock pots, you can use chicken beer stock if you prefer, bisto granules, a spoonful of ginger powder, one teaspoon of mustard seed powder, one teaspoon of ground garlic or you can use fresh garlic, sea salt and black pepper to taste. Followed by four tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. I then slice my mushrooms crossways and layer them on top of the mixed ingredients. This seems to work well and it stops the mushrooms from breaking up and partially dissolving while cooking. I then add my stock ingredients that I have mixed up with boiling water, keeping it a thick mixture, then pour it on top of the complete ingredients. Once cooking begins, the ingredients will create moisture of its own and juices, so do not be tempted to make the stock runny, as you will just end up with too much fluid in the final cooked filling. I then cover the filling mix with foil. Then place the ingredients in an oven that has been preheated to 175 degrees centigrade for 1 hour and 30 minutes. You can make your own pastry from scratch but just for convenience I use this packet mix. Mix the pastry so that it is firm and not too soft or runny. Then place cling film over the pastry and leave it in a fridge to rest for 30 minutes. The next thing is to do is to prepare a work surface and lightly dust it with plain flour to roll your pastry on. Next thing is to do is rub your dishes that you're using with a light coating of butter. This will avoid the pastry sticking while cooking. Roll your pastry out so they have enough to line your dishes. I do roll mine quite thin as I'm not keen on thick pastry on pies. Line the pie dishes with a pastry and trim around the edges with a knife so you have an end product that looks something like this. Once you've removed your filling mix from the oven and it is ready, add it to the pastry lined dishes so that it is nice and thick and quite full. Add the top pastry to the pies using beaten egg to seal the top and the base and then glaze the whole complete top of the pie with beaten egg. Put a few small holes in the pastry top to avoid the top rising above the filling while cooking. Preheat the oven to 175 degrees, then place the pies in a mid oven position and cook for about 30 minutes or until golden brown. By this time you should have some rabbit and black pudding pies that look something like this. I hope this short photo recipe for my rabbit and black pudding pies has helped you and thanks for watching.